Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 28 years of practicing pharmacy. I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system it's a regenerating system it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis and while some folks may call that healing renewing regenerating system a miracle it really is just the way the body works if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs if you're dealing with a health challenge or have a loved one dealing with a health challenge let us show you how easy it can be to reverse the degenerative disease process to access the built-in healing regenerating capacities of the body You can use nutrition to do it. You can use supplements to do it. You can use exercise strategies to do it. You can use lifestyle strategies to do it. But you can't use drugs to do it, and you can't use doctoring to do it unless you consider having an organ removed or having your body poisoned to be a healing strategy. But we can show you how easy it can be to get yourself on a good nutritional supplement program and for reals, as Ollie G would say, for reals. Reverse the degenerative disease process. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be exciting to not have to deal with prescription drugs and not have to deal with going to the doctor and not have to deal with the inflammation and the swelling and the pain and the discomfort and the overall misery of chronic degenerative diseases? Don't you want to get over your chronic degenerative disease? Not only, by the way, when you get on a nutritional supplement program, you understand how the body works. Not only can you reverse your chronic degenerative diseases, but you can access the health and joy that is built into the human body. We're going to be talking about how the brain and how emotions and how mental health can be affected by dietary nutritional strategies here in a little bit. But if you have questions about how to get off your prescription drugs or how to reverse your degenerative disease process, we can help you today. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. Try to get on board early. We'll get your calls here in our second segment. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, and take a look at our shopping cart. You can also go to criticalhealthnews.com, or you can check out my blog, pharmacistben.com, and order products directly off the website. Or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Okay, we'll get your calls here in uh, in uh, our second segment, towards the end of our second segment. First come, first serve. Try to get on board early. 844-236-6010 is our number. So we've been talking fats. In the last program we talked about MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, MCT oils. Some people call them MCT fats. We said they're important for people who have issues processing fat, and that's a lot of folks. If you had a gallbladder removed, if you have gallbladder pain after eating, pain in uh, the upper part, upper right-hand part of your body, if you have uh, if you have a liver issue, uh, 30% of Americans are dealing with fatty liver disease, intestinal issue, stomach issue, pancreatic issue, all of these can compromise your ability to access fats from foods, thus the importance of medium chain triglycerides, MCTs, and the easiest way to get MCTs into your system is through coconut oil, which is not only super duper tasty, and not only a source of vitamin E, at least a little bit of vitamin E, but it's also great to cook with. Keep in mind, 
it's an oil and you don't want to burn your oils, it's going to be volatile and the less heat oils are subjected to, the better off they're going to be. But as far as oils, as far as heating oils go, coconut oil is one of the better ones to heat. What coconut oil can get you, in addition to the MCTs, the medium chain triglycerides, is they can provide a way to dissolve plant nutrients from vegetables. This is one of the hidden causes of diseases, disease, and it's also one of the hidden causes of skin aging, one of the hidden causes of wrinkling and photo damage, one of the hidden causes of, uh, of dark spots, hyperpigmentation, is the fact that we don't access skin protective nutrients from vegetables as we get older or as our fat processing or fat dissolving machinery, if you will, starts to break down with age. And this is extremely uh, extra important, I should say, for menopausal or perimenopausal women who have no, are notorious for having difficulties processing fats. And of course, we know that menopausal and perimenopausal women are also more susceptible to skin problems as they get older. So if that sounds like, if that sounds like you, it's not necessarily a wrinkle cream issue. Use coconut oil, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, uh, beets, uh, whatever your favorite veggies, onions, whatever your favorite veggies are, uh, and cook with your, uh, 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 roast them slightly in a frying pan with a little bit of coconut oil. Uh, the MCTs will be a good solvent for all the veggie nutrients, and you'll also get the vitamins and minerals out of the veggies as well. MCTs also get you a, a quick energy. MCTs have a degree of water solubility. They're not exactly water soluble fats, but they're water dispersible. Water dispersible means that they don't dissolve in water. Your MCTs and your coconut oil aren't going to dissolve in water, but they'll spread out in water. So they're not exactly soluble in water, but they spread out. They're dispersible in water. And in the world of nutrition and chemistry, this is pretty incredible. You've got a water dispersible fat. You've got a fat that will actually spread out in water. MCTs are oils, so they're lipo. Remember we talked last time about lipo versus hydro. They're, they're fatty, but they have a slightly hydro characteristic, and that allows the body to handle them in a unique fashion that is different from regular fats. This hydro quality, this water-soluble quality of MCT oils makes them quick acting. Remember, hydronutrients are quick acting. Liponutrients take more processing, so they're more long-term. The hydro nature of MCTs means they're going to be quick acting. They have uh, easy to process characteristic, and that is what allows compromised patients, patients who have compromised digestive systems, who may not be accessing their liponutrients that well, to get some lipo benefits from coconut oil and to get some quick energy as well. So in other words, what I'm saying here is unlike other oils and fats that need to go through all the complex processing steps that ordinary fats have to go through, MCTs go right to work. Ordinary fats have to go through your lymph. They've got to be protected and they've got to get carried around in little bubbles uh, through the lymphatic system. MCTs go right into the blood. This allows them to avoid all the processing systems that the body has to go through for more typical fats and, and they can be converted into fuel right away and they're not stored. Uh, they're not stored as readily as regular fats either, so they're great for if you're if you like the taste of fat, but you don't want to get fat, or you like the taste of uh, you want the energy-inducing benefits of fat. You can use MCT oils and not have to worry about storage. That, to really understand MCT oils, I've got to digress just a little bit and talk about fats to really get a handle on the importance and the really stunning nutritional value and very fascinating biochemistry of fats. We got to digress a little bit and talk about. Uh, of fats, I should say of MCT fats, we got to digress a little bit and talk about fats. So what most people call fats is technically called a triglyceride. That's what a fat is. They come in three sizes. We've said this before. And they all have their own particular relevance uh, to health. And unless your healthcare professional is really up on his nutrition or her nutrition, there's a good chance that they're not really aware of the benefits and the relationships that all these fats have with each other in terms of their sizes. Most healthcare professionals don't really know what a short chain fat is or a medium chain fat is or a large chain fat is. These are the three sizes that triglycerides and fats come in, and they're all important for health, all of them. And we'll talk here in a second about these short ones, and they're incredibly important for heart health and for brain health and for losing weight and for uh, 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 blood sugar control if you're a diabetic. When was the last time you heard your doctor, your endocrinologist, or even your dietitian for that matter, talk about the importance, the fundamental nature, the fundamental importance of these short chain fats? So you've got three sizes of fats. You've got long, medium, and short. The short ones are, they are so interesting. 
They're the most interesting, I think, of all the fats. Medium ones are interesting too, but these short ones, they're also called volatile fats. Man, these things are incredible in how fundamentally important they are and how fundamentally they, the, important they are for uh, something that we've been talking about a lot on this program, and that is the, the uh, health power of a good fast. We'll talk about that connection, short chain fatty acids and fasting. Here we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. If you've got a question about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls here uh, towards the end of our segment here, uh, second segment. I hate leaving folks on hold. So if you can call in early, that would help. 844 If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, something you may have heard about on the news or in the press somewhere, questions about skincare or questions about nutrition or nutritional supplementation, we are here for you. Let us help you change your life today. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you're interested in purchasing the Swero V or any of the Beyond Organic products from Longevity or the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Healthy Star Pack, or if you want to just join the Brightside Ben team, I encourage you to call the phone team at 866-735-2470 for a one-time $10 fee. You can start yourself a business, get your products at the wholesale price, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, offer a one-time $10 fee, and they can tell you all about it if you call 866-735-2470. Uh, the Brightside Ben phone team. You can also hit the join the team link on brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or now criticalhealthnews.com. That's my blog that I'm doing with uh, George Nori, criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, we're talking triglycerides, fats, the three different kinds of fats. You've got the medium, medium, uh, I'm sorry, large, medium, and small, the shortest ones. Those are the most, in well, I think they're the most interesting. Short chain fatty acids, they're called volatile fatty acids because they evaporate readily. Unlike the medium chain fats, which are water dispersible, they'll, the medium chain uh, fats that are in uh, coconut oil, 60% anyway, of coconut oil's medium chain fats, these medium chain fats are water dispersible. They'll spread in water but not completely dissolve. But the short chain fatty acids, oh my goodness, they will actually dissolve in water. They are water soluble fats. In fact, if you looked at one of these short chain fatty acids, these SCFAs, you might actually think you were looking at water. They look like water. And most people don't even think of them as fats. One of the most common of these short chain fatty acids is one that you probably have in your kitchen cabinet. It's one that we've talked about ad infinitum. We've talked about it uh, for so, pretty much every day, every bright side episode. We talk about this one short chain fatty acid, and I'll bet you don't even, you wouldn't even consider it a fat. When I tell you what it is, you're going to be blown away. And it is a short chain fatty acid, and this stuff has its, uh, gets its health relevance and health power because it is a short chain fatty acid. I'll tell you what that is here momentarily. So the fact that these uh, short chain fatty acids are so volatile and so water soluble, but they're still fats and they still can be used as energy gives them some very, very important processing uh, properties. They don't have to go through all the processing that other fats do. They're like medium chain fats in this, in this regard. They can travel through the blood quickly, but because they have such easy access to the blood, they're water soluble after all, they can actually get right into the brain and they can communicate to the brain. When your short chain fatty acids go up, they can move into the blood and then they can move into the brain. This is how the, one of the ways anyway, the intestine communicates to the brain via short chain fatty acids. They're brain chemicals. So you eat certain foods, and we're going to talk about how you can upregulate or increase your short chain fatty acids, the production of short chain fatty acids. But for now, just understand when you have more short chain fatty acids, short fats in the intestine, these short fats go into the blood and they go into the brain and they talk to the brain. And this makes them ideal signaling molecules for communicating to the brain what's happening in the digestive system. These uh, short chain fatty acids are perfect signaling molecules that can tell the brain what's going on in the intestine. And this is one of the reasons why short chain fatty acids are such terrific appetite suppressants. Short chain fatty acids turn off your appetite. This is amazing. You got a fat that turns off the appetite. This is a classic example of why you don't want to listen to your dietitian who typically doesn't understand chemistry. 
dietitians understand calories, dietitians may understand food, but they don't understand biochemistry. And that's the only way they can tell you to stay away from butter or to stay away from fats because as it turns out, short chain fatty acids and butter contains lots of these short chain fatty acids can actually suppress the appetite. You got a fat that helps you lose weight. Butter helps you lose weight. How do you like that? And it tastes awesome too. The idea of signaling and chemistry and biological activity that's associated with fat is why you really, really don't want to pay any attention to standard dietitian or medical information about all fat is bad and all fat is the same. There isn't one type of fat. And not all fat is bad. In the case of medium fats and short fats, you actually have fatty molecules that have anti-fat storage benefits, as we're going to talk about here probably tomorrow, because I want to get your phone calls. We'll talk tomorrow how short-chain fatty acids are also very important for blood sugar control. They're also very important for heart health. And guess what? This is really amazing. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Short-chain fatty acids can actually lower cholesterol synthesis. That's right. Butter is the best statin drug going, or at least one of the best statin drugs going, with no toxicity and no insurance companies and no uh, uh, going to the doctor and going to the drugstore and waiting in line. We'll, we'll continue this talk tomorrow. I just want you to understand how unbelievably medicinal and nutritionally valuable and biochemically active these short chain fats are. And as I say, butter is one of the best sources of uh, a really super, super powerful short chain fatty acid called butyric acid. We'll continue this discussion tomorrow on the Bright Side. Got some phone calls to get to. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's welcome Donald to the Bright Side. Good morning, Donald. How you doing, buddy? Good morning, Ben. Good morning. Uh, about eight months I've had this little sore on the left side of the cheek, and I went to the dermatologist. He took a biopsy, and the lab said that there's, a, oh, there's like a six centimeters in there, cancer cells. Okay. They want to do surgery. Well, you probably should get it taken out. Did they, did they biopsy it and they tell you it's malignant or anything like that? Well, yeah, they, yeah, they said six centimeters, uh, can, I guess it's cancer cells. Okay. Yeah, you're, they're going to take it out, I'm sure. Uh, before, uh, after they take it out, and even before they take it out, make sure you're putting topical fatty vitamin C on there. And if you can't find a, a good fatty vitamin C, shoot me an email and uh, I'll, I'll send you a couple samples or, or tell you where you can get it. Uh, ben at ksco.com. Also, you want to make sure that you're protecting your skin with antioxidant nutrition. And there's lots of things that you should be doing. Um, for one thing, we've been talking about the importance of of uh, vegetables and fats combined. Vegetables not only contain skin uh, uh, anti-aging substances for the skin, they also contain anti-cancer substances for the skin. So making sure that you're using Brussels sprouts and broccoli and beets yeah. and all, all your veggies with oil, with coconut oil or with butter to extract those fatty substances. You should be on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine for sure. Yes, I'm on, I've been on a healthy start pack now for Good. two years. But I wanted to ask you too, there's a doctor on TV that is, he said the latest thing, he's got this, this, uh, like a cream you put on the face. It's got, eggplant? Uh, is it the eggplant cream? No, no, it's, uh, that new, uh, what do they call that, uh, ozone cream with minerals? Um, yeah, you can, I don't know necessarily that that's going to uh, be anti-cancer, but it, it can heal your skin. It can have some nice healing properties for the skin. Ozonated, we've talked about ozonated topicals um, in the past. Ozonated or ozone-loaded oils can be very healing. Uh, so you want to use that after your surgery for sure. But what I was talking to you earlier is about a cream called, uh, it's an eggplant cream. Uh, it's, I, I think they... Think here, uh, BEC5, BEC5. It's an eggplant extract cream, and it's got some really interesting benefits for skin cancer. Hang tight, Don. I'll tell you. I'll uh, finish up when we come back from our break. I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. You're listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Donald in Tennessee. Skin cancer. Uh, yes. A couple things. So uh, I, the ozonated oil, that's a great healing tool. I don't know necessarily it's going to be protective for you from the sun. The best thing you could do to protect your skin from the sun is, uh, and also pre-surgery and post-surgery for that matter, is topical fatty vitamin C. Shoot me an email if you can't find it, and I'll tell you how to get it. Well, uh, I don't oh, have, I, I don't know how to work the computer. Uh, you don't? No. Sorry. Neighbor? Somebody? You got a neighbor or somebody? 
Yeah, I got a neighbor. Yeah, get a neighbor. Shoot me an email, Ben at KSCO.com. Put your phone number there, and I'll call you back. Uh, also, there's this uh, eggplant cancer cure. I don't know if you've heard of this. Um, you can get a book called The Eggplant Cancer Cure. Uh, it's by a guy who actually discovered, and he swears in the book anyway, he swears the stuff is, uh, is effective for dealing with cancer. Uh, and it's an eggplant cream, and I forgot the name of it, although something tells me it's like BEC5 or something along those lines. Just Google eggplant cancer cure, uh, it's, and uh, you'll get a lot of information. You'll get the book, and you'll also uh, get a source for the eggplant cream for cancer. The guy's name who wrote the book is Cham, Bill Cham, C-H-A-M. Well, I wanted you? to ask you, too. They're yeah. telling me there, there's a root in there, and they have to get the root yeah. out. Is that yeah, true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If they don't get the whole thing out, it's going to come back. Okay, so. and then I heard that frankincense oil is good. No, 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 that's not, that's not, that's silly. That's I don't know who told you that. No, 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 no. That's not going to, cancer is not, frankincense oil is not going to take care of cancer. Cancer is a sign that cells are freaked out, and it takes a lot of damage for a cell to become freaked out. The sun can't do it by itself. The cell has to be destabilized, whether it's a skin cell or any other cell. The cell has to be freaked out and destabilized for it to become cancerous. A cancer cell is a cell that is at its wit's end, and it knows no other way to survive than to divide very rapidly. So you want to consider a, a cancer cell to be the equivalent of a sociopathic human being. You know, human beings are not supposed to be sociopaths, but when they've been pushed to their wit's end and they're scared and freaked out, they become sociopathic. They just do whatever they need to do to survive, and that's what a cancer cell is. A cancer cell doesn't care about its neighbors. It doesn't communicate to its neighbors like other cells do. It's just a greedy, nutrient-sucking up, fast-dividing cell, and it's a cell that has just been completely abused for decades. So by the time a cell turns cancerous, with all due respect, it's not just, I'm not just talking to you, um, uh, Donald, I'm talking about everybody out there who's dealing with cancer. By the time a cell has become cancerous, for the most part, it's manifesting the signs of long-term abuse. You can't just put frankincense oil or anything else on a cell and then expect it to behave itself. You got to calm the cell down. And in this way, cancer is just like any other health issue. It's a sign of a cell and ultimately a body in distress. Calm the body down with nutrition, with oxygen, staying away from any kind of problem foods, most importantly, or, or toxins in general, and just kind of relax the system. And then the body will take care of the cancer itself. The body will take care of everything itself as long as it has the raw materials to do its work and it has a clean environment and a clean, stress free environment to do its work. I got to move on, Don. Anything else? Six centimeters large? Yeah, you're, you're up there. You want to definitely have that taken care of. Yeah, the nurse said it didn't get to the bone or the muscle yet. Okay, I would have it taken care of. I wouldn't mess around and then change your life around. Make sure you get on a good supplement program, uh, especially the veggies and the oil. I got to move, Donald. Thank you so much. God bless you and good luck with everything. I hope that works out for you. Nancy in Tennessee, thanks for holding. What's going on? Um, I have a question about whey protein. Um, sure. I concentrate versus isolate. Uh, the isolate is much have a much more heavily processed form of whey. Whey is already a processed protein, and, and processing is always the enemy of food. Uh, it's especially the enemy of protein. So the isolates are made uh, to, for people who have problems with some of the fractions that are in whey. I wouldn't mess around with the isolate unless you have an abs. You know, you can't handle whey and you want to get the whey protein. It's really not a good option. Go concentrate. My opinion. Okay. And what about raw goat's milk? Is awesome stuff. Awesome. More healthy for your body. Oh, yes. Goat's milk is the best milk going. You know, milk in general it's kind of a mixed bag. There's good things and there's bad things in milk, but it's really the processing, the homogenization, and the pasteurization that's the issue. So raw milk is always going to be to your advantage, and goat's milk is a much more uh, human-friendly form of milk than, than bovine or cow's milk would be. Right. And then the last question, probiotics before a meal, and also sweeties before a meal. Is yeah. it a, they ta you take those two together? That's yeah, you can take them together. It doesn't matter before or after the meal. That shouldn't make oh. a difference. Yeah, as long as you have it in your system while you're eating or while the food's in your system. You have the chromium, the vanadium, and the B vitamins for that matter. Sip on the BTT as well. We don't talk about that a lot, but BTT with your meals will help you get access nutrition from your meals and help stabilize your sugar, as well as the sweeties, same idea, and the ultimate EFAs for that matter as well. As long as it's around the same time as you have the food in your stomach before or after the meal shouldn't make too much of a difference. Great. 
Okay. okay. And then let's, you know, Nancy, I don't know if you, this interests you, but for the listeners, there's a company called Mount Capra that has goat whey protein. And I think it's organic even, organic goat whey protein. I'm not sure if it's organic, but it's definitely goat whey protein. Uh, and uh, if, you're, if you want to do goat dairy, look up Mount Capra, C-A-P-R-A. Mount, yeah, Mount M-T, M-T. No, no, M-T, M-T for Mount Capra, C-A-P-R-A. And they have goat, goat protein, and I'm pretty, or goat whey protein. And I'm pretty sure it's organic, although you'll have to look into that. Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks, Nancy. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Uh, let's go to Castle Rock. What's up, Robert? In my hey, neck of the ben, woods. How are you? How you feeling, buddy? I'm going to see you this Saturday, right? Uh, yes, sir. Super Saturday for you guys Every- in the Denver area. I'm going to be doing a talk for my good friend Tom, uh, Tom and Denise Chenault. will be doing a talk for uh, for uh, longevity this Saturday, March the seventh, and it's in Longmont. So if you're in the Colorado area, I hope to see you. What's up, Robert? How you doing? <laughs> well, I was doing well until the snowstorm hit, and I. You slipped fell. out of my car, not thinking, and just jammed. It took all the force on my kneecap. Oh, no. That's awful. Is it swollen? Yeah, yeah. Swollen? Yeah, well, it, it's stiffened up, and I iced it and all that kind of stuff. But what can I take to... You're, uh, you're, you're Robert that lost all that weight, right? Yes, my sir. Yes. How's that going, by the way? Still losing? It's going well. Still losing. Got how much? Tell, 50 tell, pounds to go. Tell the listeners how much you lost. Nobody's going to believe uh, this. 110 pounds so far. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. How much more do you want to lose? I'm going to 165. You want to lose 165 pounds? No, I'm going to 165. Oh, you want to be 165. Okay, and then will you be at convention? Will I see you at the convention? Uh, Yes, I will be at convention. Okay, good deal. I'll look forward to that. All right, so uh, uh, for for the knee, a lot of things you could do. First of all, I'd be rubbing that CM cream on there, CM cream, and you might also want to take some of the CM capsules. Make sure you're using the ultimate EFAs. And then one of the neatest things you could do to when you have a bruise or you fall or even pre-surgery or post-surgery if you want to reduce inflammation is use the ultimate enzymes with some apple cider vinegar together on an empty stomach. Obviously, the ultimate enzymes, their digestive enzymes, are going to help you with food, but they can also help you with inflammation uh, after you wound yourself, or after you hurt yourself, I should say. Uh, And this is also true before and after surgery. So two or three uh, ultimate enzyme capsules in the middle of the day, uh, and take it with a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and that'll help with the inflammation and speed up the healing. A couple other things if you want to throw in. Uh, Vitamin E is very anti-inflammatory. Vitamin E also has got some good anti-inflammatory benefits for post-workout for people who are working out a lot and getting post-workout inflammation. But any inflammation, 400 to 800 IU of vitamin E, Robert, take it with food. Um, But make sure, uh, if you take 800, that's a lot. Make sure you don't have any diarrhea or loose stools. If that's the case, then back back down a little bit. I like alpha lipoic acid. We're going to talk about alpha lipoic acid here in the next couple of days because, as it turns out, lipoic acid is a medium chain fat. It's a fatty acid. Uh, Alpha lipoic acid, 400 milligrams, along with your vitamin E. I got to move, Robert. Thanks for your call, buddy. I look forward to seeing you uh, on Saturday. Congratulations on losing that weight. That's what you can do with good nutrition, you guys. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang tight. We'll get your calls. uh, If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get get your calls when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. Side. Got some lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 if you have questions about skin care, health care, nutritional supplements. If you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Good morning, Stephen in Virginia. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Oh, all right. Uh, nice to hear you again. Thank you. Um, What's going on? We uh, were wondering if you could give... Um Clarify uh, the, the about the difference between the two types of vitamin E. Two types. There's four types that I or eight types actually. What what, make, what makes you think two types? What were you thinking? And then I'll tell you. Uh, why. I wasn't sure about that, but I okay. I know, I do know what you're saying. There's two main types. You're right, and then each one of those two types has four subtypes within it. So you have something called tocopherols. And that's the standard ones, uh, the most uh, the most prominent subfraction of the tocopherols is called alpha tocopherol. That's the ones that are easier to extract, and those are the ones we've known about for a while. There's actually four different tocopherols. The most famous one, or the most uh, uh, e- readily available, is called alpha tocopherol. And then there's also beta, uh, delta, gamma, and uh, 
Alpha, Delta, Gamma, I forget what the other one is. Alpha, Beta, maybe Beta, Tocopherol, Alpha, Beta, Delta, and Gamma. In any case, there's four Tocopherols, and then there's four Tocotrienols. And Tocotrienols are the latest darling in the world of nutrition. Not the latest, but they've been around for maybe three or four years in the news for three or four years. Uh, and those are more powerfully antioxidant than, uh, than the Tocopherol. So the best bet, Steve, is to use both, and that's what I do. I use mixed Tocopherols and mixed Tocotrienols, and I try to get anywhere from four to 800 international units of vitamin E a day. It's stupendously healing, vitamin E, and it's also very important for the heart, and it's very important for fats in general, and it's important for all cells. Uh, very important for folks who are dealing with dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And the more fats you eat, the more essential fatty acids and uh, EFA supplements you take or oils that you eat, the more vitamin E you need. Vitamin E protects fats from rancidity and oxidation. So if you're supplementing with essential fatty acids or you're using fats on your salad, uh, uh, vegetable oils on your salad or salad oil, then you want to make sure you're upping your vitamin E. And as I was saying to, to uh, Donald or Robert, uh, Robert before we went to break, vitamin E also has anti-inflammatory properties if you hurt yourself or after a workout, post, post-workout uh, anti-inflammatory properties. Does that help, Steve? Yes, yes. That's... Uh... I'll tell you one, <laughs> one last thing. One last thing. Let me tell you. Selenium and vitamin E work together. So when you're taking your selenium, that's a good time to take your vitamin E, or vice versa. Uh, selenium, the ultimate selenium from longevity, works with vitamin E. They go hand in hand. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. No, we were also reminded. We, uh, the gentleman with the skin cancer, we were reminded about the. Um which you've uh, taught us about, of course, avoiding sugar and the deep breathing. Yeah, that's also uh, always important. I, it doesn't sound like it would be important because, you know, we're so used to, oh, you take this medicine for this problem, but it's really the general systemic strategies that are going to give you the best bang for your buck in terms of health benefits, general strategies, relaxation, nutritional supplementation, making sure you're staying away from crappy food, processed food and sugars and processed fats, etc., correcting digestive problems. These are general General strategies that will help you with your heart, they'll help you prevent cancer, they'll help you uh, uh, keep wrinkles at bay, and uh, anti, anti uh, hyperpigmentation strategies. These are all general strategies that are really the, the cause. Lack of y- applying these general strategies is really what's behind our health crises. Not lack of statin drugs. We don't have heart disease in this country because we don't have any, enough statin drugs. We got it because we're not applying these general, logical, God given strategies, these basic ways of taking care of our health like sitting on our couch and deep breathing or, or eating more protein and staying away from sugar. Thanks for, your, thanks for uh, pointing that out, Steve. Anything else? Anything else no, I can help you with? Uh, that's great. Good deal. We sure appreciate it. God bless, always. Steve. God bless you, my friend. Uh, okay, say hi to Rose. Too. We'll talk to you again. Okay. Uh, Todd in Portland, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Hi, Ben. It's uh, great to talk to you. I listen to most of your shows through YouTube. I just want you to know that, so keep Thank posting you. it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's my friend yeah. Kevin in in uh, the Soviet Union, or actually Russia, not uh, the Soviet Union. Russia who's yeah. putting those. Thank you, Kevin. That's All right, go great. ahead. I'm sorry, Todd. Oh, it's fine. Um, at the age of 46, I actually had bypass surgery. I'm 52 years old now. Wow. Um, I- Completely changed my life into working out, very into, very much into healthy eating and all that stuff. And your show has actually been so informative to me. Thank my you. question to you is that obviously with bypass surgery, I've had damage done to my endothelial cells in the walls. Okay. In your opinion, I read a lot of books, you know, Dr. Ignargo's Ignar- book. I'm sorry if I pronounce his name wrong. Who? Who? Um, What's his name? What's the doctor's name? Ignaro. He's the one that one of the Nobel Prize winners for nitric oxide. Okay. Um, his findings on that. Yeah. Um, anyway, he claims you can repair the damage that was done to the endothelial cells. There's no What's claim. The, That's just how it works. The, the endothelial yeah, cells. Very, Go ahead. I want to hear your opinion on that because I'm, oh. I'm excited about that. Actually. Oh, heck yes. Endothelial cells, for the listeners, are the cells that line the inside of the blood vessel. Endo meaning inside. Uh, and the thelia or thelial cells are cells that lay on top of things. Epithelial or endothelial are cells that lay on top of stuff. Endothelial cells lay on top of the lining of the blood vessel. And of course, they absolutely repair themselves. They're one of the fastest repairing cells in the body, actually. And when you think about it, it makes sense because they're constantly. 
constantly being damaged. They have to repair themselves. So yes, indeed, they do repair themselves. And you want to make absolutely sure if you have a history of heart disease or heart damage or, or if you've had a bypass, yeah, the, uh, repairing endothelial cells is a major strategy. But you don't have to worry about repairing endothelial cells. It's not like you take special endothelial cell medicine. You know, there's only four basic types of tissue in the body. Epi and endothelial tissue is one of those. And general health strategies are going to build those cells up. And that's, you don't have to do anything special, Todd. You don't need a special yep. drug. You don't need a special strategy. Although the nitric oxide stuff that we've been talking about, that can definitely yep. help you. I'm sure you've been paying attention to that. Yeah, everybody. Yes. Everybody. Don't know with, about that stuff. It's I don't know why. Maybe. Yeah, I know. I don't know why. For some reason, people don't aren't hip to that yet. Uh, but using all the nitrates, making, have you explored uh, nitrate juices, veggie juices, celery juice, and beet juice, and that kind of stuff? Oh, boy. I got my Nutribullet, and I do three a day. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You know, have you tried? Celery juice, is that what you're doing? Or what kind I'm of juice? Actually, a lot of beet juice. And then easy. blueberries, blueberries and stuff like that. Well, easy on the options. sugar. Easy on the sugar. The beets are a source okay. of sugar. They've got lots of good stuff in there, though, so you still want them. Same with blueberries. Easy on the sugar. But celery and cucumber, I don't know the Nutribullet. I assume you keep the fiber in the Nutribullet. Is that right? You don't yeah. lose the fiber. Yeah. Okay, good. Because yeah. that fiber, we're going to talk about that fiber that you get in celery tomorrow as a source of these fatty acids. But you want to make sure you're using your fiber for when you're making your nitrate drinks. And then are you putting salt and spices in your drink, too? I do a little bit of sea salt, and I actually add some whey protein once in a while to some of my post-workout ones. And then also, oh, nice. because of um, listening to your show, I add some coconut oil to it. And that was the one last question I want to ask you, too, because you're a fan of the doc, Dr. Wallach, but he doesn't seem to have the same thoughts on Yeah, we've oil. gone over that. I, I don't okay. agree. You know, I love Dr. Wallach, and I've been following his stuff for many years, and I consider him one of my nutrition mentors and a good friend as well. But I don't always agree with everything he says. We don't always agree. And it's not like there's a Bible where you go to and you read and it tells you coconut oil is good or coconut oil is bad. What nutritionists do and scientists do is we take all of the literature, all of the evidence, and then we see how it works in our personal life. And if we're lucky enough to have patients and work clinically, we see how it works in our patients' lives. And then we make our own decision. Doc Wallach has made a decision, and I don't can't argue with him, that you know coconut oil is something to stay away from. I disagree with that. There's, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, and Todd, you got to form your own opinion and listeners you all got to form your own opinions i don't want anybody just listening to me that's a pharmacist's worst nightmare is somebody who comes in and gets their drugs and doesn't look at the bottle and doesn't ask questions you always want to uh, you always want to do your own research do your own literature searches test things in your body and so for me coconut oil there's too many valuable things in coconut oil to dismiss it as a source of nutrition don't you know make sure it's fresh and don't cook it too much but it's a, a wonderful source of nutrition and as far as those nitrate drinks go uh, for the endothelial cells and for upregulating nitric oxide, I am telling you, and Todd, you can verify this for me, you will not believe how, number one, tasty and delicious celery and cucumber and salt and spices in a, in a, a Vitamix or Nutribullet it can be. But not only is it tasty, I mean unbelievably tasty, but it's so filling and so satisfying. And not only that, but when you drink a celery and cucumber juice with spices and salt, not only is it going to be tasty, not only is it going to be filling. And not only is it going to be really good for you, but there's something that the celery and the vegetables do that keep you from wanting to eat crappy food after that. You know what I'm saying, Todd? After you, you don't feel like eating crap after that. There's just something I so... No, I have no cravings anymore for, for junk. I, don't, I mean, I eat that's yeah, the protein when I crave sugars. Like yes. That. That's one of the neat things about these veggie juices and really nutritional supplementation in general. And thanks for your call, Todd. Appreciate it. Uh, but in any case, the, the celery and the cucumber juice, you try to eat some Sara Lee Twinkies or whatever processed dessert you want to eat. After you have a celery or cucumber juice with salt and spice, I'm telling you, it's going to be near impossible to do. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. Tomorrow we'll continue talking fats and a little bit about nitrates as well. I'll tell you about a really interesting fat that's probably in your medicine cabinet if you're like a lot of folks and you probably don't even know it's a fat but it's really really good for you we'll do all that tomorrow on the bright side thanks for listening have a wonderful spectacular day we'll talk to y'all later folks bye for now